Hey guys, Vice Bump here, bringing you another mythic sepulchre of the first ones on Holy Guide. Today we're taking a look at Prototype Pantheon, and this one is uh, something I'm very proud of. So this is another rank 1 uh, kill I got, and I'm actually running the fabled Defile Night Fae Death's Reach build. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how it works exactly once we get into the video. But for the setup, for legendaries, I use the Unity as well as Death's Reach. If you don't remember, Death's Reach makes it so that Death Call deals more damage and reduces the cooldown on your Definite K or Defile or Death's G, whatever you have available at the moment. Furthermore, I'm running Night Fae, so I pick up the, the Dream Weaver. You can have a look at the build over here. And then I'm also running this weird talent build with Infected Claws and Defile, stuff like that. The whole idea here is to have incredibly high uptime on Defile, incredibly high uptime on the Death's Due buff, ideally like 4 stack, and essentially get most of the damage from that. Okay, let's jump right into it and have a look at what that looks like in practice. First of all, uh, I want army instantly. I'm going to wait a couple seconds, and that's to get some good overlap with my 4 set buff once we kill the add that spawns. So you can see there I use Festering Strike, and then I kind of shield for a couple seconds, and then I use army. I then use Blight, Dark Transformation, pop down on Defile, and instantly use Curse Strike twice. A large part of this build is about making sure we keep 100% uptime on the 4 sets that you can see here, I have a weak R for it. So at the end of our Death and Decay window, so we want to hit Scourge Strike, and as soon as our Death and Decay comes up again, we pop it down, and then hit Scourge Strike, you can see there. We don't want to simply just spam Scourge Strike without any wounds on the target. I did try that a couple of times, but it didn't really work out for me. I think you lose too much damage on it to... Uh, like, you generate less resources overall, because you don't get Festering Wounds, which give you more, like 3 per pop. And that means less defiles and so on. So I think the play is to actually do your normal rotation. Just make sure at the end, when you definitely K window, or Defile window, you make sure you pop down there. You use your Scourge Strikes. You can see I lost the buff quickly there, but that's fine. Nothing too fancy going on in this first phase. We're just, we're just focusing on using our Defile on cooldown. We're also making sure that we use our uh, Soul Reaper on the add when we can. When that's broken, the second one we won't break, so we can't really do much there. And we also have the interrupt priority, so we're interrupting here on the three. The boss is going to come or be sent up. They go up at 40%, which means that I'm not going to use my cooldown, so I'm holding them for the next set. Once they do jump up, I put my pet on passive. Otherwise, it risk getting stuck at the end of the platform, so this is just much better. So once they jump up, put it on passive, and then once they come back down, you activate it to go again. Okay. Here again, I use um, double festering, get ready. I don't use my cooldowns ASAP, I want them to get stacked. And then I use blight, dot formation, apocalypse, and then double festering to get our uh, stacks going. I keep track of the definite K window, make sure that I use skirt strike right at the end. It's generally not required, but it gives you more leeway. Right, so if something happens, you have to run away. It's just uh, more helpful. All right, we're now doing the rotation. It would take a couple of tries to get used to this, but you know, it's all about. You don't necessarily need to spam your buttons because you don't have that many resources. Make sure you have the GCD ready for the file. Make sure to pop that down ASAP, and make sure to prioritize popping uh, Scourge Strike at the end of your Definite K window. You don't need to time it. Just make sure that when you are Close to the end, every GCD is a um, Scourge Strike. Alright, we set up for the Death and K window. That can actually be a bit tricky. There's a lot of pressure downwards on the wounds for this build because we're using lots of Scourge Strikes, right, in our Death and K, which means that sometimes it's difficult to increase your wound count to be ready for your um, Apocalypse, which is why you need to play plan a lot in advance and so on when we get this runaway i use ams that's good for two reasons one is that it reduces the damage i take 
Also, it means that I can run it, I can accidentally get hit by one of these patches and I won't get stunned and I won't get any uh, debuff. So it's, it's an excellent opportunity to use your AMS. We continue here, just keep popping down our Death D, keep getting out default damage. You can see at the end, my default damage was the highest of any ability I used, so it does deal a significant amount. A reason why we run Infected Claws here is to help build up the wounds, right? I said there's lots of downward pressure due to using Defile a lot and due to using Skirt Strike with Defile. Using Infected Claws means that we we kind of like we are helped in generating them. Bosses are soon at 40%, so they're going to jump up and we're going to prepare for the final phase. Again, put the pet on passive and get ready. Final phase. It's going to take like 20 seconds before we get our blood loss. What we're going to aim to do is make sure we interrupt the target we are supposed to interrupt and also locate an ad that we can start using Soul Reaper on as soon as possible. So I'm on Prototype of War here. He casts his Gloom Bolt. That's my interrupt. I make sure to interrupt that. Pop down Definite K, Defile as soon as possible. I've located that uh, I think Duty is somewhat low. So I'm going to try and use a Soul Reaper on her. As soon as the ad dies, we're going to use, no, Bloodlust comes, I pop everything, I use my sorry as much as possible, get Apocalypse down as well, make sure I interrupt my uh, Bolt, pop down Depthy as much as soon as I can, and then just, at this point, since I have four targets, I just want to spam Skirt Strike in my Depthy. There's too much damage, right? All right, it's quite hectic. I use my AMS there to stay healthy. I do use a uh, Death Steed at that point, which doesn't hit much. Unfortunate, that could have been a bit more DPS. But we have so much haste that the cooldown is incredibly low. We're gonna pop our cooldowns here once more. It's gonna be a bit difficult here to uh, get the runes ready. But I'm not too stressed about it because uh, I only have one set of cooldowns left, so it doesn't matter that I don't use them ASAP. Okay. Boss is about to die. We might get one more defile in before they uh, actually do die. So more we'll Scourge Strike Cleave. Pump, pump, pump. Using our Soul Reaper. I think it's technically better here to use Soul Reaper on different targets. So you are guaranteed that they all proc. Otherwise, you can risk building up kind of a long debuff, which means they won't all proc at the end. But it's something you don't really need to care about. All right, bosses die. I go at something like 16.5k overall, and I get the rank one. Easy peasy. Now, obviously, this fight is a frost fight. So if I did this on uh, a frost death knight, it would do significantly more DPS. But I quite like the challenge to make uh, unholy work in a way. I hope you guys found that useful. I had a lot of fun trying out this build making it work i hope you guys can also get it to work effectively um best of luck with that do leave a comment down below let me know what you thought about this video upload down below consider subscribing hook me up on the Akos discord if you have any questions at all i will see you guys in the next video thank you very much and bye bye